Hello everyone, welcome back to Spectrum Classes. In this video, we are going to discuss about the calorific value of a fuel. So, here we are going to discuss calorific value of a fuel, what is called calorific value and the units for the determination of calorific value. Apart from this, we are going to discuss the gross and net calorific value of a fuel and how to determine the gross calorific value of a fuel with the help of a bomb calorimeter. So these are the points which we are going to discuss in this video. So let's start with the video calorific value of a fuel. The quantity of heat liberated by combustion of unit quantity of fuel is called its calorific value. So first of all we are going to discuss about the calorific value what is called calorific value of a fuel. So the quantity of heat liberated by the combustion of unit quantity of fuel is called its calorific value. Right. So here say this is some wood and it is burned in the presence of air. The process is called the combustion of a fuel. Right. So fuel plus oxygen on combustion it is giving combustion products plus heat this is the combustion process and fuel oxygen and some heat is required for this combustion process of a fuel and we get combustion products smoke and heat out of this right now coming to the units of the heat i have shown this picture in which there is a bunsen burner and here we are having some amount of uh, water and in which we are having a thermometer right so the calorific value of a fuel can be measured in calories so the what is called calorie the amount of heat required to increase the temperature of one gram of water by one degree centigrade so that amount of heat is known or is called one calories right if we are talking about the kilocalories then it is termed instead of this one gram we are saying one kilogram of water by one degree centigrade only then it is called kilocalories now coming to the next unit the next unit is british thermal unit so the british thermal unit means when the temperature of one pound of water is raised by one fahrenheit so this is important in earlier cases calories and kilocalories it is one degree centigrade but in british thermal unit it is one pound of water raised one fahrenheit right so one british thermal unit is equal to 252 calories or we can say it if we divide it by 1000 then it is 0.252 kilocalories if we take reverse of this means one kilocalorie is equal to 1 upon 0.252 it means we are getting 3.968 british thermal unit fine in some of the texts we are also come across with the centigrade heat unit so the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one pound of water through one degree centigrade that is called centigrade heat unit chu right so these are the units to determine the calorific value of a given fuel now coming to the next point what is called gross and calorific value of a fuel so first i will discuss with the net calorific value of a given fuel this net calorific value is also known as low calorific value so the net calorific value is the heat which is produced when unit mass or unit volume of the fuel is burnt completely and the combustion products are allowed to escape they are just simply escape we are not doing any condensation over there in that case the amount of heat which is produced or which is used is the low calorific value or net calorific value now you can ask if we are not allowed to escape then what is going to be happen yes we are coming to that point but before that i am just going to give you the example of this net calorific value so i will take common example for the net calorific value as well as for gross calorific value so the fuel you burn in the car engine contains octane c8 h18 
and if it is burned in the presence of oxygen it produces co2 and h2o gases right if we allow this carbon dioxide as well as this water vapors to escape then the heat produced by this process is known as net calorific value fine now coming to the gross calorific value what is this gross calorific value this is also known as high calorific value so the total amount of heat liberated when unit mass or unit volume of the fuel has been burned completely and the combustion products are cooled down to room temperature then what is going to be happen say here all the gases are escaped if we cool down them what is going to be happen co2 remains co2 at room temperature but if we reduce the temperature then water vapors are going to be changed into liquid water as i have shown this picture vapors converted to the liquid and in this case we are getting the extra energy just because this water which is vapors in here i have written gas right so this is actually vapors on condensation this water is converted to the water liquid and just because of this there is an additional amount of energy which is added to the system is known as latent heat of steam which is equal to for this water this is equal to 587 calories per grams right so this additional heat which is related to the hydrogen present in the fuel is additionally added to the gross calorific value that is why it is also known as high calorific value i am just going to uh, give you an example what is this latent heat of steam as you uh, very well aware about the fact that we are burned with the vapors more as compared to the boiling water on the same temperature so that is actually because of the latent heat of steam now how we are going to determine the low calorific value here this is low calorific value and this is gross calorific value so there is a formula between low calorific value and gross calorific value this lcv low calorific value is equal to gross calorific value minus 9 into 9 into hydrogen hydrogen is mass of hydrogen which is present in the fuel into 587 calories per gram and you might aware about this fact that in some of the text 587 is given in some of the text 580 is given so whichever is given in your book or in your question paper you please consider that value for the latent heat of steam now if you forget about this formula that what is the relation between these two so first of all low calorific value is always less than the gross calorific value that is done right now from where this terms come so this 9 is come i am just going to give you this example so hydrogen h2 on combination with half o2 half o2 means one oxygen it gives water vapors if we check the molecular weight of this h2 then this is 2 grams and the molecular weight of water vapors is 18 grams h2o 16 plus 2 18 if i convert it 1 grams then i just divide both the sides by 2 so 1 gram is equal to 9 grams so 1 gram of hydrogen produces 9 grams of water vapors that is why this 9 comes into the picture here and this is the latent heat of steam for the water and this is since this is by unitary method actually if your um, fuel is having say 7% of hydrogen it means 7 upon 100 so 1 gram is equal to 9 grams so 7 upon 100 means 9 into 7 upon 100 so that is unitary by unitary method this formula comes i hope you will be able to remember this here h means mass of hydrogen now coming to the next example if we are having percentage of hydrogen then this formula simply converted to and this will be equal to lcv is equal to gcv minus 9 into percentage of hydrogen divided by 100 just simply converted right into 587 calories per gram it can be kilocalories per kilogram also right so you have to check it out in your question 